Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Engineering SADX lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. So if we have our vectors in this Cartesian vector notation, we can add them together very simply because all we have to do is just add the components. That's it, that's all, it's actually that simple. So let's say I had two vectors, f1 and f2, and of course they have an x component. So we see we have fx1 and we have fx2, and they have y components, fy1, fy2. If I wanted to add these together to get my resultant vector, instead of going through the parallelogram method making that crazy triangle, all I need to do is just add the components together. So if I look at the i component or the horizontal component, it's simply going to be fx1 plus fx2. And if I look at the vertical component, it's simply going to be fy1 plus fy2. It's that easy, which makes our lives a lot easier. In the end, that's what we want. We want our lives to be easier. So let's go through an example just to show you guys just how easy this is. So if we had f1 as 3i plus 4j, so it would be going right by amount of 3 and then up by the amount 4. And we had f2 as negative 2i plus 8j, so this one's going to the left 2 units and then up 8 units. If I wanted to add them together, all I do is take the 2i components, throw them together. So I got 3 from f1 and then plus negative 2 from f2 and that's going to be for the i direction, and the j direction is going to be 4 from f1 plus 8 from f2. This will leave me with my final answer of 1i plus 12j, and that's all I have to do to add these two vectors together. I don't have to draw any triangles, which is great. We have our resultant vector. Now more importantly, this allows us to add multiple vectors in a single step. If I had an f3 and f4, well, all I have to do is add those components into my addition. This allows me to kind of create this nice formula where if I'm adding vectors in 2D, I can add an infinite amount of vectors simply just by adding their components. Now again, Clayton, why is this so nice? Well, this is easy to program. I can very easily go into MATLAB, Python, C++, whatever you want, and very easily program this so that my software can add all my vectors together really, really fast. All right, so that's kind of the nice thing. Now, the last thing we have to discuss is solving these vector components. We went through the formula of magnitude, unit vector, and we initially had all the components. We said we have fx, fy, and fz, and if I know those three components, everything's easy. I just substitute everything into formulas. But remember, typically in these type of questions, we're not given the components, we're actually given the magnitude of the force and some sort of trigonometry. And as an initial step, we have to take what we know and find that force vector in Cartesian vector form. So for 3D scenarios, we have three general cases to find these force components. And it's not official three cases, it's, it's my own personal three cases. So if you guys know these three cases, you guys will be good to go no matter what scenario. The first one is what I call the trig case, the trigonometry case. This is the one students I think hate the most because again, it's trigonometry. No one likes trigonometry. So this is the case where they give us our force vector in 3D and they give us two things, two trigonomic identities. They give us the angle from the xy plane up until the vector, so that would be theta one in this picture. And then they give us the angle in the xy plane, that theta two. So in this particular case, it looks really complex, but it's actually just a matter of solving two right triangles. So the first triangle is going to come right here. So if I were to go from the xy plane out, we have fxy. And then if I were to go from that point upwards, it would be fz. So this is going to be our first triangle, and the angle, of course, is going to be theta 1. So from here, I can conclude two things. My fz component is simply going to be the magnitude multiplied by sine theta 1. So that's pretty easy. Right off the bat, I already have one of my components. Now, if I were to do cosine, I'm not getting fy or fz, I'm actually getting fxy. So this would be the vector in the xy plane. And again, that's just taking the magnitude of f and multiplying it by cosine of theta one. So at this point, I know one out of the three components. But what about the other two? Well, these can be obtained by using the second angle, theta two, and again, creating another triangle. So I can go fx in the x direction and then fy in the y direction. And as we can see, it forms another triangle with fxy. So in this case, my fx is going to be fxy times cosine of theta. And my fy is going to be fxy 
times sine of theta 2. So that fxy, even though it seems like a useless intermediate step, we actually need it to solve for fx as well as fy. At the end, this is the worst case, but it's actually pretty simple. It's just four calculations. You'll be good to go. You'll know all of your components, and then you can proceed to things like the unit vector, magnitude, stuff like that. Now, the second case is what I call the coordinate angles case or the coordinate direction angles, and this is going to be the easier case. So this is when they give you a force vector in 3D, and they're very generous, and then they give you the three coordinate direction angles. If this is the case, we said, Clayton, this is a joke. We know that we can find those components if we know those coordinate direction angles. Fx is simply going to be the magnitude of f multiplied by cosine alpha. Fy is going to be the magnitude of f multiplied by cosine beta. And finally, Fz is going to be the magnitude of f multiplied by cosine gamma. So as we can see, this is actually the easier the cases. So these are going to be the two kind of main cases you're going to see initially. Now you guys are saying, Clayton, you idiot, you have a typo. You said that there's three cases, but you just showed us two. Well, there actually is a third case, but it's not going to be in this video because the third case is much more different than these first two cases. And it uses something called position vectors, which are going to be extremely important moving forward. The reason why I'm not discussing in this video is because it's not like the first two cases. The first two cases involve trigonometry. Every single calculation here is cosine or sine of an angle. Now, this is impractical in reality. Let's say that I have a giant wire that stretches to a telephone pole, provides it some support. As an engineer, you're not gonna go out in the field with your dinky little protractor and start measuring angles. So these two cases, they're good to know, but in reality, they're impractical because we don't go out into real life and start measuring angles we would know the location of something, and we would know the location of another thing. And as we're going to see in the next lecture, if we know the two locations, we can actually solve for components really simply. So I'm alluding to the next video, so it's great. So for now, we need to know these two cases, and then we'll discuss the third case in the next video. So now that we know the components of a 3D vector, as well as the formulas for the unit vector magnitude and coordinate direction angles, the last thing that these questions really ask us to do is just add the vectors together. They'll give us maybe three vectors and they'll say, you know what, I want that resultant vector. Well, if we have all of our vectors into Cartesian vector notation, we can add them using the same process as before, where the x component is simply going to be the summation of all the x components. The resultant y component is going to be the summation of all the y components. The only thing that we're doing is we're now adding those z components. But again, we just take them, we add them all together. Best way to show this is an example. So let's say that they give you three vectors and they say, you know what, Clayton, I want that resultant vector F1 plus F2 plus F3. And you guys may be saying, oh, this looks like a lot of work. Actually, it's a piece of cake. FR, or the resultant vector, is going to have a component in the I direction. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the I components of F1, F2, and F3, combine them together, and then I get 2 minus 1 plus 3 and that is going to be my resultant i component. For the j component, again, all I'm doing is I'm taking all three of those j components of f1, f2, and f3, adding them together, and then the same thing for the k component. So my resultant force is going to be 4i plus 2j plus 3k. And now that I know this, I can figure out the unit vector, I can figure out the magnitude, all of that fun stuff. So as we can see, it's actually looking very nice. Now. You guys are saying, Clayton, it's, it's looking nice, but uh, it's looking too nice. <laughs> That's what you kind of learn in your later years, is something looks nice, while there's probably something bad around the corner. And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> so that's probably not the answer you guys want to hear, but that is this. Thus far, we've always just said that if we want a resultant vector, just add everything together, you're good to go. And that's true because up until this point, we've dealt with something called concurrent systems. And next week, too, we're still going to be dealing with them, so it's okay. Concurrent systems are fine. But what happens is all these systems or all these forces act at the same point. And this allows for all of that simplicity. This allows us to take all of our forces, add them together. But as we're going to see in week four and beyond, we're going to deal with something called non-concurrent systems. And this is when our forces do not act at the same point. As we can see, this thing starts to rotate. And that's where things are going to get a little bit more complex. So yep, yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. 
and I will see you in the next video.